very nice showing, very happy about that, um, to this uh, lecture tonight um, on the works of the practice Novika Stern, which um, was set up by Marta Novitska and Odette Stern-Mayas in 1995, both graduated from Kingston. Um, it's actually quite interesting because I'm sure that most of you are quite familiar with their projects because uh, you will go when you see these projects like, ah, oh, hmm, yeah, I've been there, I know this project, I remember this. Um, projects for a list of clients, which is actually rather illustrious, like Pressbury uh, Group, Peripheral Vision, Siberia, EasyNet, and, and, and Hanover Grant, the list is very long, and uh, I don't really want to say much about um, the kind of framework and the kind of um, um, topics of the lecture, because I think this will follow soon, but I should make you aware of the fact, or that told me that they brought a lot of these brochures with, which uh, depict the projects that you will see in a very nice way and also give you uh, very interesting information about uh, various issues and items to do with the project, such as clients and so forth. Uh, one thing was really interesting earlier on, um, the title, as you might have seen, is there ain't no such thing as the real world. One thing that was really interesting uh, was that statement earlier on in the bar that he would like a plastic cup because that's the real material. So I think that should be a very exciting statement to start the lecture off with. Please welcome. Hi there, thanks, thanks very much for introducing us. Um, Martha and I started the company as uh, the studio about six years ago, March 95. And uh, basically we came together as, um, after working for other um, companies uh, on a project that went disastrously wrong, I <laughs> think. And um, yeah, the only thing that we've learned from it is that we wanted to work together and we had complementary skills and that uh, um, we, we felt that we could do things differently. Well, the project was for Casey International. It was a, um, uh, a company that does beauty products. And I think one of the things that we've learned was that we've done exactly what the client asked us almost sort of literally, we, yeah. we kind of learned from that process and became more confident. We still are, we're still in the process of learning. Um, and that was the last time that I think we did what the client wanted. Yeah. Um, I think the title was that we kind of like wanted to continue what we've done at college, which was uh, at college they, you know, they said to us, okay, use your creativity because in the real world, you won't be able to do that. And we felt uh, that a lot of companies sort of have actors almost like their own policemen um, when it comes to working with clients and um, say, oh, the client would never agree to this, therefore let's dilute the concept, let's try something else. And uh, it's not something that happened overnight, but we kind of like learned more and more to trust our own judgment and, and, and just go with something and just be, be brave with it. Um, so. Let's start. Yeah. So, as I said, said we, st we started the company and we started um, with one project, which went wrong, <laughs> and then we got another project and we sort of started having projects back to back. And, uh, and then very quickly, the, the company started to expand and we started to get side-by-side -side projects. And um, to this, and at the moment, this is the team. So there's Wayne, Sabine, us, Simon and James. Two new additions. And two new additions, Shima and Kotek, who's the office cat. Who he's he's <laughs> who responsible for the printing. He always prints the print um, button. <laughs> and, yeah. Um, the first project that we'd like to start with is um, in Clerkenwell, between Leather Lane and um, Hatton Garden. Some of you may know the area. And it's a 70s block. 
um, early 70s block that was derelict for, um, or empty, um, for 12 years before we got our hands on it. And uh, before that, it had been an office block with um, <coughs> laboratories and a large catering department. And um, the client, um, the Pressbury Group, who um, bought the whole site, um, asked us to come up with a, a concept for the whole building. They wanted it as um, speculative office space. And they literally sort of complete blue sky approach said, you know, we don't know what sort of office space to, do, to design, come up with a whole concept. It was, it was a 45,000 square feet of an L-shaped building. You can't actually see, but on the right-hand side, it continues to an L-shape. Um, and it's in the area where the marketing people sort of suggested that there was going to be quite a lot of city-type people going in there. And uh, the concept that we produced, what we felt was that Clark and were actually <coughs> A flowing into that area and we wanted to produce something that would address a more sort of media time. Yeah. We um, came up with the concept that the building should be like um, an archaeological dig and uh, we worked very much on site as a sort of form of archaeology with um, the contractors and the client. Um, so as we demolished walls, as we cleared the space, as we gutted it, we, we were there every day working with. So um, it was an interesting package because we didn't have a huge drawing package. It was very actually site specific. And the whole sort of concept started evolving in a very, very site specific basis. Um, the, the metamorphosis evolved of, of a butterfly, that the building was like a pupa that actually was was changing and developing into, into a beautiful, new, you know, vibrant being full of colour and new energy. And uh, we use that as sort of for the marketing aspect of it and the graphic aspect and internally keeping referring to the building as a sort of a new butterfly, a, a new lease of life. Um, we gutted all the interior and um, created a very flexible system because it was a speculative office building. We didn't know who the end user would be um, and how they were going to use the space. So we created a sort of a background, almost like an artist's studio. We felt a sort of atelier approach would be the right approach, um, firstly because of the low budget, <laughs> which suited our client's pocket, and uh, just the, the raw finishes. You can see the sort of the concrete ceiling left part of where the old suspended ceilings used to come in onto the columns. Very 80s, yeah, really sort of 80s, reminiscent of the 80s. So we just left that <laughs> and all the elements were left, sort of the old <coughs> power strips going through. We sort of worked with. I mean, there was, there was also a, f a, f a very functional sort of element to it. We saved the client about a quarter of a million just by leaving the redundant services and using them um, for, um, you know, to enhance the building rather than sort of getting rid of them. This is one of the presentation drawings that we did to the client and that's actually the finished result. So you can see this is pretty similar, sort of pasting in all exposed services. We designed the services, we designed the lighting. It had to be category two, but we didn't like any category two lighting on the market, so we designed it. <coughs> Uh, with a fluorescent strip, which you can just see actually over there. There's a, there's a pointy thing, isn't there? There is a pointy thing. Oh, yeah. oh. There. Ha! That's much better. There's a blue. On, above each, um, each um, uh, lighting, sort of category 2 lighting, we put a fluorescent strip. So the, the L-shaped building was, was glowing. On one side of the, sh of the L, there was blue fluorescent. The other one was red. So at night, the whole building was glowing, almost like a light box. Um, and therefore sort of creating a two core circulation area that reflected that sort of, it, it helps in, in terms of um, uh, navigation circulating mm -hmm. through the space, two reception areas. And what was great about this project, because it was so site specific, we actually had design brief meetings with all the builders, you know, all the sort of tattoos and the sun and, you know, cups of tea and 
builders bottoms and we sat down and we talked with them saying you know you're artists with us and creating the building and whatever you find that you think is of interest keep it and we'll look at you know where we can use it or how we can use it so everybody was really empowered on the site and actually loved having meetings and they used to call us at the office and say oh we found that sort of wheel you know tank on the second floor and they and then sort of stacked all in the basement uh, for us to come and look at them and very proud of themselves yeah Um, because it was very site specific, um, Leather Lane, as mentioned, is just next door and we took the sort of language for the detailing for the reception desks and all, all the sort of the features that we designed from the street stalls and street markets. We work very much close to our sites. We get the inspiration from the site and around the site. You know, it's very site specific. We believe in working sort of in a... In a local contextualization rather than a sort of a global one. It's a very local, very specific, so everybody has a feeling of belonging to it. Um, this shows the, the, as the sort of the development of the design of the reception area and an installation done by Sean Kimber, artist in the reception area, which was um, all made we work very closely with artists and commission work. And um, this is an installation made from parts that the builders were finding. You know, they're really delighted. They found this huge brass cholerifer, old um, drum, and then all these parts and CCTV. And this was an interactive installation piece that actually film filmed you coming in to the building and uh, had a, a film of a butterfly, which again referred to our whole sort of philosophy about the building inside. Um, this shows the circulation areas where we left the, the rough surface where all the tires were just blowing off the wall. It was like very 70s sort of black grays and white sort of series of tiles and they were peeling off so we just left them almost like a piece of art and each landing there was another thing to look at there was another sort of <coughs> place of interest yeah. this shows um, the lighting that we designed uh, we worked very closely with the sort of mechanical and electrical guys on site we looked at you know in their toolboxes and saw what sort of things we could design and make and this is um a directory board as well as a light feature so if somebody's not occupying a floor you know it still looks purposeful it still looks like it's sort of part of the building rather than an empty space in each reception area we had sort of uh, the, the two reception areas so they act you can see them on the right hand side you can actually see from the street the directory it acts as a light as well as a as a signage and you just put a sleeve over uh, the fluorescent with the name of the company <coughs> This shows the, the pieces that we found all over the building and in every sort of corner and, you know, in the office space, we, we left pieces of the building um, which we sort of lit and that's where everybody sort of really got involved and enjoyed it. And then we refurbished the um, terrazzo staircase and designed this sort of light feature to unify the whole block to go all the way through it. This is the uh, heating system, which, again, we watch just very exposed, very industrial. Um, and you can see the sort of the roughness of, of the columns and mm -hmm. the, the new installation of um, mechanical and electrical. The lighting grid and the, um, and the mechanical electrical, this sort of the heating, the uh, <coughs> element was designed so if there is a company that all, all they get is a space, if they want to put a partition in between, all they do is they, they move the uh, light along that grid or they sort of unscrew the areas of the um, uh, ductwork and, and plug them where they want them. So very flexible space. Last but not least, the, the loos, the toilets, we had, um, instead of signage, we had lights outside, blue for boys and red for girls. 
a bit obvious. But, uh, and then, you know, inside we had, again, a very industrial feel. Um, that just shows a sort of a sketch. And we work very much in sketch form and visualisation so we can communicate to the client what every single space is going to look like. And the funny thing about it is the client understood, almost from the very beginning, they empowered us to continue with what they do. It was Nick Leslow from Pressbury Group. And, um, but the marketing people <clears throat> that were supposed to go and rent the space out could not understand what we were talking about. And we had to go with them with potential tenants and show the space and explain the concept before the space was already there. Because it was very sort of un unreal in, in the context of the city at the time. And the space was, they had offers on all seven floors within a week of opening, which was unheard of uh, on and that space. <coughs> this is a, a project for uh, an internet company, another.com, one of the um, .com success stories. Survivors. Survivors. <laughs> no, sure. um, what they do is basically they provide free internet addresses. And we took sort of, when they came to us, there were three of them. Uh, and they said they were going to grow very quickly to 40. Um, and gave very functional sort of, uh, they wanted a meeting room, they wanted uh, kitchen uh, areas to sit, sort of ten, uh, four groups of ten. Um, and we took the idea of, of um, um, internet virtual addresses, and we kind of like thought addresses, real addresses, what's, what's the connection? And we thought real address is really a real piece of land, an inhabited piece of land. Uh, so the idea was to bring land into the office and the whole metaphor of cityscape evolved where um, you sit in front of your computer sort of working on the virtual sort of surfing and then you need something to ground you, you need something to bring you down to earth and the idea of Central Park New York which we took uh, was everyone working in the offices the blocks around and they come to the park to meet, to eat, to shack, to drink, to do whatever, play and uh, and then develop the plan. And when we developed the plan, sort of the, how do you work that? Yeah, we had the four blocks, which are the production, technical, admin, marketing. And the park was the thing that was, you know, grounding them. Uh, the entrance was from here. And this was like a reception area, which is you just filter into the meeting area if you need to bring anyone in. When we brought the skiing, um, and we said, surf and turf, we want to put the grass. The first thing that they asked us, we, we, they had like three directors there and the managing director, and they said, you don't really mean real grass. And we said, yeah, so we're going to have more the lawn. We said, yeah, three or four times a week. And three of them were just sitting there very quiet, not saying anything. And uh, the managing director sort of looked at us, and we thought, okay, that's another place where we're going to get kicked out of. And uh, he said, uh, great, fantastic, let's go with it. So after him agreeing to go with it, um, we kind of like developed the concept, which was very, um, at the time, for us, it was challenging because it was considered to be that it wasn't done ever before that the real grass will grow and be maintained indoors. So we worked with scientists from Kew Gardens and try and develop it. This shows the entrance and the whole metaphor of a fun place to work in and a, and a park was you walk through the main door, instead of sitting down, you sit in sort of on, on uh, swings. Mm. The thing was that it was very kinetic. We felt that everybody's, you know, in their blocks is very stagnant. And, uh, you know, if you're working with a computer a very long time, it's a very sort of sedatory um, state to be in. And here it was all about, you know, using your kinetic skills, using something different, opening yourself up. Um, you know, moving, um, enjoying, um, smelling grass, you know, all this stuff. So it developed a whole vocabulary and language that we then implemented and created this whole really um, playful environment for workers and visitors to, to sort of enjoy together. Um, again, sort of visualizing very much to the client what it's going to be. They didn't have a dog, but we thought they should do. Um, yeah. and, um, and creating that sort of area that 
hides the, the work unit and cr creates sort of that purposeful area into and suggests that greenery that is about, you're about to encounter. One of the things they said about the swings is, is that you really think, I mean, they, it's, they, there were a lot of issues. Once they said yes, it wasn't quite yes. Um, they, you really think that That's bankers are going to, to agree to come and sit in swings waiting and, and then would they sit on grass because we, didn't, we said there's no furniture, you just sit on yeah. grass like you sit in the park. Right. Yeah. And this actually uh, shows yeah. the, the main area, which is just a piece of grass. There's no furniture, there's no hierarchy. You know, you get the bankers, the investors, mm. all these serious business, you know, city types turning up and actually having to sit cross-legged on grass and get wet asses yeah. and, you know, all the rest of it. Well, that's it. I mean, we put, put um, internal irrigation inside so that it's, it's, it waters it from underneath, so diminishes the, the, the wet ass bit. Uh, then, but because damped. there are lots of computers, just damp us. Uh, lots of computers in the space, so we had to put um, um, dehumidifiers to combat that element. Then ultraviolet lights um, that come on, on, on at night, um, which are combined, so you can see half dark, half uh, lit. So it was half li light, half ultraviolet. Um, and um, so, so the grass continues to grow at night and you don't get the sun tan. Um, and, and the idea was that these bankers are the type of people that would go on the weekend and will sit with their children and will enjoy sort of get, um, getting down to earth. And uh, of course, <coughs> the, the, the company is known as the company with the lawn yeah. and it's become really infamous amongst all the investors and everybody wants to go there. It was like, the, you know, when they moved in, they had permanent knocks on the door, people just coming in, list, you know, from yeah. the whole area, because it was, was in... Tomorrow's World, was there? Tomorrow's World, yeah. actually, yeah, filmed um, people sitting, working on laptops, and had them mo on Connected. heart monitors to see if actually people's um, blood, um, what is it, pulses were That's lower, pressure, yeah. yeah and blood pressure was lower working on grass. So it had a huge sort of media success, um, much to our clients' satisfaction and pleasure. Um, and and um, yeah, a great sort of response from everyone who, who went there. Um, a view sort of onto, from, from the kitchen area really, onto, back onto the grass and the work units, developing sort of a whole system that was specifically for the client, specifically for the, um, the type of use which had a lot of um, um, voice data information needed immediate access to. <coughs> you can see sort of, um, there, there was this um, system that was hovering right above the, uh, the desks and just dropping down um, and feeding onto the desk the, uh, the, all the, the huge electrical needs. Yeah, they could actually isolate if there are any problems in the system very clearly. And because it's all open system, it's not you know, concealed. Uh, so it was a very sort of good functionally for them as well. Um, this project is for General Electrics um, in Sunbury on Thames. It's the Information Services Division, and we were commissioned to do all the circulation areas on this site, really large site, and um, and a very um, small reception area. It was sort of four meters by six meters, um, very tight, and. Um, we were sort of given the challenge of creating an environment that looked very sharp and responsive and um, created um, the sort of the right image for the information services, very sharp. Um, the, the concept for this actually came from um, Egyptian temples, um, like in Karnak, where the, where, they, um, where the ancient Egyptians brought the floor and the ceiling together, so you created an infinite space. Um, i.e. an infinite horizon, therefore the space would seem much, much larger. And um, the, the, the generation points for all the angles were actually outside the site boundaries that we were working with, and it generated through into the space. So
So we created these very long, elegant angles that made everything seem much larger and longer, um, but it was actually a very, very small space. Uh, we used stainless steel, so you get this quality, you know, reflective quality of, of a larger space. And um, everywhere you could touch, like the reception area and the um, press release book was sort of in warm walnut, so it, was, it felt very inviting. The detailing, we felt, had to be really superb, really, really sharp. Um, you can see there, it's sort of <coughs> the shadow gaps, the, the lining through, very, very precise. We worked with very good makers and um, detailed absolutely, you know, every single detail to the millimetre. So the whole thing became like a real jewel within this very small space, so it's really precious. Um, this was um, another project for Presbury Group PLC. It was um, a, a business park in, um, in uh, Basingstoke. Uh, don't know if you know them, but they basically build like sheds, huge sheds, and, and there were five buildings there. It's quite a frustrating space because it's just a space and a, and a box. And uh, the client came to us, it, it wasn't late, and the client came to us asking if, you know, if um, we can bring it up, give it a bit, um, another, an identity. So what we did was we took sort of, uh, this is the orange building, we gave each building a color and a, and a strong sort of uh, pulling a, a canopy out, numbering them. and. Um, and the concept that we took was almost like a, a, a pool uh, table, like uh, where we, we just throw the balls around, and um, creating a strong sort of uh, feel for each one of the core elements. Very, very simple. It was a carpet with uh, a graphics cladding sort of each one of the um, uh, en entrance or exits uh, units with female, male, coffee, tea, escape, roots. Um, and giving a sense of orientation within the space um, and then following it through again so the old building giving them something in a toilet you don't expect to see a toilet like this in a, in a <coughs> business park um, there wasn't what we felt is that it needed a sense of community and they had two squash courts there but two squash courts is two people playing you know, four people playing for 45 minutes together, and we felt that um, it should become a gym, something that would bring it together. And um, you can see it's one of the squash courts was actually converted um, into a gym, and this is looking from the gallery area. One of the things they wanted, they had an office there, and they wanted to still see what's going on, but they couldn't um, put a suspended ceiling. So very simple use of sort of uh, um, designating the space with fluorescent and putting stick lights, which feels that the space is being brought um, uh, down, but still sort of giving the viewing, flexible viewing area. Um, this is the gate vegetarian restaurant, I don't know if anyone know it, you know, that it's, um, uh, they have a, one in Hammersmith and they um, opened another one in Belsize Park, northwest, northwest London. And the, the one in Hammersmith has a very good reputation, it's considered to be the best sort of vegetarian meal in London and it's, it's almost like, um, it's, it wasn't designed, it was evolved, it, it's been evolved, beautiful space actually. And uh, we had the challenge of moving into a space which was, uh, it was previously an Indian restaurant. Um, and uh, taken sort of the idea of vegetarian food, wholesome, real, um, and trying to sort of bring that into the space. So it's almost, um, we took the notion of um, aerial view of a farmyard, and the space was actually very similar. It was long and thin. And we produced it almost like in three versions, which one, one for the sort of tables, uh, circulation, and bar. Um, and um, 
kind of like creating out of proportion barnyards of uh, uh, gate um, and an, yeah an entrance to the actual restaurant so mm. using scale that you get sort of a, almost on a farmyard or in, in rural places the, the change in scale And um, looking at the type of finishes and, and a sort of uh, almost like a pathway, how you deal with the space, the uh, um, free, free range and... Who's this in there? I'm taking a picture. I don't know. Um, <laughs> it was very much to, to communicate the sort of the, the agricultural feel, that it wasn't too um, complicated an interior, that it had a feel of the sort of the farmyard, the immediacy. Um, to, to create that sort of organic food, healthy food, vegetarian food. Um, this is looking back from the back of the restaurant. Um, bring down, sort of, I don't know if uh, anyone knows Primrose Hill, but if you look down at the bottom of the hill, up the hill at night, you get this very clear sort of route of, of lights going up, up, the, up the hill. And what we did is in the space, um, we created a similar route from, from uh, the front of the restaurant, and you can see it's uh, using uh, uh, silver dome bulbs uh, into the end of the stage, and that's the only lighting that there is there, and it sort of pulls you right into there in a very purposeful way. There's the chicken. <laughs> um, and using the, the materials, I mean, sort of exposing um, things like pipes in the in, in the walls and and uh, and keeping them almost like a you know it's it's there it's in a barn it's rusty it's um, using the same sort of finishes plywood birch ply right um, this is a project that we're just currently finishing on site. So these are self-taken slides of areas that are sort of semi-finished. Um, the, the company is Framestore. You may know them because they, they're a post-production um, film company that do special effects. They did Chicken Run, Walking with the Dinosaurs, and um, they're currently working on Dinotopia, which is a really big American film that's um, probably going to open end of this. Yeah, because no. as a success of Walking with Dinosaurs, they've been commissioned to... Yeah, they're the sort of top animators in Britain. And um, their, their building um, was designed sort of eight years ago by Harper Mackay and Mariscal, and we were commissioned to do the, the next floor up and to deal with um, the expansion um, and a hundred new staff. And um, we, you know, we, we were given a problem of a hundred staff all working in various teams, very, very specific needs because they're, they're very, um, their work is very, very task orientated. It's, you know, um, so lighting was a big issue there. I mean, they, they obviously the lighting has to be absolutely spot on when yeah. for animators. Yeah. And again, looking at what, what the company does, what they're working at, you know, scratching very near to home, um, we came up with the concept of a circuit board. So you've got the animator, the computer, the circuit board. It's looking at the components and their interrelationships and the graphics and the communication between all these components. We felt was like the, the way the teams work, yeah? Each team is a separate component that is is um, that its location and its link is incredibly important and the efficiency of that. So the plan was developed over several months with the client um, where this is part of the plan here that we were looking at sort of some open plan area uh, and then very specific um, areas of um, production and inferno suites and henry suites where they work on flame and it's, it's very very specific we had only only the computer the server room was 50 square meters 500 yeah. square feet of a computer Which huge server room 
there. Just feeding into the And rest. we actually, um, unlike most um, sort of design approaches, you tend to put the, the um, machine room at the back of house or, or in the basement. We actually put it in the middle of the space and we made it completely clear with glass so you can see in and see all the lights and, and have access to all the cables. It's like the center, it's the hub. Um, we interviewed every team. <laughs> we, we, tend to, we tend to sort of go before, especially in projects like this, and, and really sort of see how people work. And, they, and they, as Marta mentioned, there were lots of teams there, and we kind of like acted almost like a spy on the wall where we sat there. People tell you, they give you a brief of what uh, they expect to receive. And often when you see, you go and watch them work, and uh, you, you see something else, they work in a certain way which they don't analyze, they think they want to work. So what we did was we kind of like looked at it and sort of this is one out of many. Uh, yeah, we had teams. boards like this for every team and we discussed it with every team, how they felt about um, their current space and their new working space. Um, we designed all the sort of um, the junctions between the, the, ground, the existing ground floor um, and the interface between the two floors. And here we can show, this is, we presented two frames store because they work in, in sort of film. We, we presented a storyboard, we presented a whole storyboard of their space, visualizing absolutely every scene of like coming into the building and what would happen as you went through the, the building. Um, and this shows the reception area, uh, a stainless steel bridge coming across and a helical staircase which um, the site is on Knoll Street and Berwick Street, so Knoll Street will be on the yeah Knoll um, Street's <coughs> here. It's just the, it's on the side of the window. And you can see that from the visuals that we showed them. We spend a lot of time working and developing the design and developing the design. You know the materials, the detailing. So when we actually come to present to the client, we we know how it's going to be you know made and detailed. Um, here you can see a stainless steel bridge coming across. Um, that's a bespoke leather boomerang seat. Um, that's glass balustrade looking down to the basement. This is actually looking back at the whole entrance space with the helical <coughs> stair going up to the first floor there, the seat. And here we felt rather than um, closing a team off, um, bookings and production, we felt they should become part of the reception area to keep it open plan. So you get that interaction, you get the, you know, to talk to people coming in and the reception becomes a vibrant point of the company and uh, it's, it's opening up the company to people coming in rather than closing it. That shows some of the detailing and lights. I mean, we were, we're just um, finishing all the snagging off, as you can see. There. Um, the helical staircase, uh, we clad the treads, and they're all individual. They're all, each tread is completely different as, as you go around. So they're all individually made um, and manufactured. Um, we, we clad it in stainless steel. We had a very small area that we could actually cut a void in the um, in situ slab because of the reinforcement. So we were constantly having to change the scale of the helical stair. It started off really big and generous and it got tighter and tighter. And we were constantly arguing with the structural engineers. You know, we need more space. It's this battle of wits. Um, and we just very gesturally sort of cut a hole in the slab, which you can see there with the reinforcing and coming through. And then here you have the beginning of, of the sort of the echo of the circuit board again on the first floor, the whole first floor, with various boxes that have various functions. And then the graphic that takes you through, the graphic lines that takes you through to, to a certain area. Um, 
This is the black box. This is the sort of the main control of the whole floor where um, the, the final rushes and everything is cut. And uh, you can see this was our first, um, this was our design proposal to the client. And that's the finished product. As you can see, that I mean, they're still finishing it off. But um, you can see how close it is, even in the scale, the proportion, um, the, the reflection. You know, we used high gloss laminate here, so you get a reflection of the sky outside and the world outside. So this becomes like a street, and this becomes your front elevation of doors and windows. The needs of the, um, of the particular sort of uh, animators is such that um, on the other side of this, where the rest of the work crew is, um, we had to reverse the laminate and put a matte laminate there so there, there isn't any reflection from the screen. Mm -hmm. Also, the type of materials we used on the floor is a similar material to uh, children's playground. Um, they wanted carpet and we said, we don't do carpets anymore. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, they, they said, okay, so now what? And then we kind of like thought, what well, now what? Um, and we proposed this thing and we had huge issues with it because obviously, I mean, no, it went through various other finishes until they said that it needed something that will absorb um, sound well. And then we arrived at this and then we had the issue because it has to be mixed on site and, and, and it was on the second floor and can they really deliver it up to the second floor until we found this company that did that. But it's beautiful. I mean, you can't, it's like a long, um, homogenous, um, uh, there's, there's no carpet tiles, or it, and it feels really unique in these lines. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> Different flavor. <laughs> Different flavor. Um, this is a project for uh, another large company, um, Ogilvy, and made a direct. Um, they've got about 89 offices around the world, and basically they were changing their name to Ogilvy One Worldwide. You're getting bored. The last. Ogilvy One Worldwide. And um, they, they whole sort of, uh, they were changing their identity, they were giving, the idea was, we, you know, we're in the process, let's give our clients brochures to show them, um, you know, that we're going through that process. So they invited us over to tart up the reception areas and um, give an area of display where they show the um, you know, the, the brochures, etc. And we thought, tart up reception areas, not quite. And what we took was the metaphor of a company that is going under, it's the same company, it's going under change. So to take that metaphor and creating, it's almost like a building that goes under refurbishment. It comes out on the other side as a different thing, but we are in the process of metamorphosis right now. Um, and uh, we took imagery of building sites and basically, uh, created, um, worked over a long weekend with um, uh, contractors. It was Bank Holiday Monday, so the employees arrived on Tuesday. And when they arrived, basically they arrived at the building site. And the various uh, sort of elements from the mission statements were in hazard signs, similar, very sim similar to this, and um, clad walls, receptionists with hard hats and red overalls, sandwiches around the, on the bar, and flashing yellow lights, and and it started the conversation, it started the discussion, which was um, the main, main element. And it was supposed to be there for a week, and I think they left it for two months or three months in, in the space uh, because it was so popular. Um, so, so rather than being a passive experience of just getting a brochure and kind of reading about the, the restructuring, it was a very active visualization of the restructuring of the whole company. Warning, new company under construction. Um, this, this is a, um, a domestic project, which we don't do many of, because it's hard to work with Because we um, don't choose carpets. So, yeah, we don't, we don't, there's a lot of stuff we don't do, so it's very hard to find the right client. Lines not to do stuff with. Um, so this is a client we actually um, worked with six years ago and they came um, back to us, which is always very nice. 
and they've got a huge house in Hampstead, really beautiful, beautiful um, sort of 1910 house um, that um, is quite near the park, really beautiful, semi-detached house. And they came to us and said, oh, we want to do the attic, We've, you know, having more and more children and we want um, an area for a nanny or, you know, some family staying. And we want two, two bedrooms and um, a bathroom and a sort of kitchen point and a sitting area. And they were expecting a corridor with two bedrooms and a bathroom and a kitchen area. So we turned up with this image and said, your house is like a tree, you know, it's established in the area, in the environment, it's grown deep roots, it's, it's got a great sense of presence. And what we're doing now is coming in, coming in and we're sort of grafting in this tree house um, into, into the top of it. It's like an established oak and we're just sort of, you know, building this element with, within the branches, the existing branches. Um, the, the build, the attic is fantastic. It's, uh, to the apex of the roof is six meters. So immediately we saw the potential of um, a double, yeah, yeah, a double height space. You know, using that double height and really getting the feel of a treehouse, of of ver the verticality, almost the vertiginous feel. Um, so, so they like that idea, and uh, we said it's like a you know a shed structure or a sort of outside structure inside. Um, here you can see the platform that we built with the bridge um, and the structure basically. We work very closely with the engineers and the district surveyor, who is a real pain, and we were fighting with all constantly because they kept changing the rules. <laughs> and we actually put steels running across and, um, and, and built this platform within the space. Um, and then kept the integrity of the sort of attic space as much as possible. Uh, this shows a, an early development sketch, um, which I'm glad we moved on a lot from, because it was a bit fussy. We had, you know, we had um, outhouses for like the, the bathroom and the shower and the, the two bedrooms and the, you know the bridge you can see the bridge there and, and the ladder but we moved away from that and we moved to just one separate structure much purer within the space um, you can see the steels coming in from that main steel coming in to to support the platform you can see hints of this uh, that opening has a garage door um, which we then yeah. modify yeah here the the main structure which this is one bedroom, that's the second bedroom above. Um, we put garage doors on, so you can actually open the whole space up and have it as one space, or close the garage doors and have an intimate space within there, you know, for your bedroom area. With and yeah, on the other side of that wall, we actually put a little door. Access to a balcony and... Yeah, that shows the space open with the balcony space and the sort of development sketches of the balcony space and as it ended up the finishes we wanted to use um, <coughs> throughout we wanted to keep as so, so, so minimal and as found as possible we used um, just glass to, in the smaller areas to give a sense of reflection and, and to increase the size of the space and then just used wood, um, timber floor, timber floors and timber and steel and, and plasterboard obviously and kept it as sort of clean as possible so it just looked as if it was grafted in. Mm. Um, This was a project for Peripheral Vision, which was um, a computer sort of service provider, internet related company, part of the Tomato Group in Lexington Street. I don't know if you've heard or know Tomato Group. Um, and uh, the space was um, a quite sort of narrow and, and long, and um, they needed to sit a number of uh, employees, and, and we kind of like created, sort of took the idea of. Uh, 
um, internet information highway. So we took sort of the idea of elements sort of um, floating and above each other and running very purposeful uh, scheme um, where we had uh, at the back, um, it, it was, um, I mean, you can just about see there was a, a skylight which we had to expose. Um, there was a, um, a floating shelf that was running right from the entrance, um, which was right on the street and into the space and a series of elements Uh, which were had each one of them purpose. This was had the computer software, books, etc., the monitors, um, the the keyboard and the hardware. And each person was sitting sort of in a zigzag to each other. So they had they, they were able to work as a team. They couldn't sort of speak to each other at the same time, concentrate on their own sort of work. You can see uh, took, taking sort of things like the toilet, this is the back of the space, and just leaving the space, it's sort of the toilet in the space with nothing, um, not trying to hide it. Um, right at the back, sort of that table becomes like an informal meeting area, and to the side of it, uh, we put another sort of uh, a, a, a more formal area of meeting. They had a, a, a damp on the wall, and there was, yeah, no yeah, there was no real money to sort of deal with it. So what we did was we exposed this, the, the, the bricks there um, and we kind of like let the dump be. And the idea was that it becomes like a, a growing piece of art where, where the dump sort of, you can see elements of it here. It's kind of like, so you get clients coming and say, oh, how's the dump doing today? And it's doing fine. Um, this is, again, sort of Eve. Uh, piece of work art by Sean. Yeah. Marlins. Yeah, yeah. Kind of a totally different scale and different type of client. This is um, Gerald Ronson, the infamous Gerald Ronson um, of Heron Corporation. Thank some you. of some of you may heard of have heard of them. Um, this is. Um, a site they had as part of their portfolio in Southampton. They've got a huge portfolio of buildings all over globally. And uh, this is one, a site in um, Southampton, which we weren't very impressed with. It's actually a building that they built themselves and then decided it's not working properly. Yeah. Um, very sort of 80s vernacular style, uh, which we immediately thought, yeah, we need to do something with it. Um, they asked us to look at graphics over the entrances. That was our brief. So we said, OK. Um, the first um, issue we um, addressed, we felt that the whole site didn't communicate as a volume um, in Southampton, that it was a large shopping centre, but the whole message of shopping centre wasn't communicated. Um, there's no information of, of the inside promise on the outside, of the scale of it, of the entrances. There's no hierarchy, there's no orientation. It's a very confusing... Looked like um, an insurance headquarters. Yeah, very confusing building. So we felt that the, the building should be like a face that you recognize but is actually clad or hidden um, and using local references. Um, so we proposed to, to put this band all the way around the whole site to create a volume to sort of tie the whole site together almost like a belt and at each entrance of which there are five um, to put up a large almost like poster you know banner big goal post, goal post yeah of information <coughs> and on that actually have the information and the sort of the message of the inside on the outside uh, this is an, another entrance that was very set back, so we actually proposed of, of wrapping the side round so you could see and follow around. This is a, a sort of presentation sketch model that um, showed the, we were looking at the branding, the graphics, um, and obviously putting it and trying to get it through planning. Thank you, Sean. Yeah. 
Here we wanted on, this is another, this is above bar entrance. Yeah, there were five entrances to this building and each one of them was quite different. But basically what we did was we took this goal post and we orientated it to, towards where the main audience will come. So in this case, it was the main audience was running along that street and, and that it's building, parallel. Marlins, was tucked away right at the back, you can see. So it was, it's kind of like protruding out and faced the audience and tantalizing them into the space. We wanted very bold graphics to sort of suggest what the building was about. And this just shows how the sort of, some of the scheme developed um, with the um, graphic identity. We made a mock-up on site of the um, fire escape flooring material that we're proposing to clad. And we're like oil rigs, sort of, again, sort of yeah. quite maritime. And um, the detail language, we were developing a, a um, telescopic bracket that we could actually change and undulate around the, around the site to carry the, the belt all the way around. And uh, we did get it through planning. We did. And we went Very through, I think it was committees a, a, a appeal and uh, we, we fought for a mm. long time to get it through. They felt it was too architecturally sort of uh, unique in Southampton. Um, this is uh, the last project that we're going to show you. We're going to show you two of this um, uh, particular client. Um, most of the projects we show you now, we showed you from frame store world, sort of in the process, and that's included. Um, this was a chain of basilica. I don't know if anyone has heard of them. It's a, it's a takeaway um, delivery pizzeria. pizzeria very high quality. Uh, they are, I think, the only delivery uh, pizza, uh, pizza company in the UK that uh, have the real uh, wooden burnt ovens. Um, and the product is uh, the, the two... Uh, very lovely guys, because I think the client may be here today. Um, and uh, one of them who's a chef that is responsible, they've got, they know exactly what their market is about. They had two operations in South London, um, Lavender Hill and Fulham Road, and that already has been designed by an architect. And they came to us. And um, what we felt is we've kind of like developed a scheme that is uh, moving away from the Tuscany type because it's a pizzeria and it, um, and kind of creating the whole language which is more of a urban language. You can see sort of in, in the the concept was taking imagery that um, the Israel basically and um, creating a scheme that uh, is all about the two the in between points of the oven, the mouth of the oven where the pizza is coming from, and the old house, which is the street. So street imagery, urban imagery that works. And the idea was to take sort of areas like loading bays, um, sort of um, very, oops, sorry. And um, on the Finchley Road, it's a very busy sort of um, road, creating, uh, taking away the shop front and creating a very strong identity for when the uh, operation is when the shop is open or closed. Um, no shop front. Um, you walk straight from the street. The, 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 the finishes on the floor is tarmac, so it continues the language of the street. Um, and um, basically, they had uh, um, primarily it's about delivery. They, you can see there are about 20 bikes there, um, which, uh, but they had some elements of takeaway. Uh, so creating a slot which is very um, clear for people, you can see two, one is actually ordering, another one is looking at the menu here, uh, for them to order, and another slot for the bikers to go and collect their bags and go. So regarding circulation in a very purposeful way, using again sort of imagery from um, the uh, street imagery, but almost creating an installation art. In, this, in, sort of in the area, uh, coming near to the slot, beginning to see what is going, what is happening behind. Um, the seating, they didn't want people to sit down and eat, didn't want to encourage that. 
So giving the feeling that you're just supposed to be there, wait for your pizza and move on. Um, this is looking at Andrew, this is the manager, you see. Um, looking into their operation, they had a basement floor which was for all their preparation, here which is the uh, uh, ground floor, and a mezzanine which we're looking at from here, looking down, which was all the telephonists that they needed to go and take their orders, etc. So this is the sort of back of house. Back of house. Obviously we, we sort of concentrated the main budget on the front of house, and then back of house concentrated on the functionality and the interrelationships of, of the people working. Um, almost like a control um, zone for it. They can see all the, everyone from, from above. They, they are the ones that are controlling the order. They can see the street. They get the light coming through. Um, and uh, what we do is we, we tend to do a very site specific. Even in a rollout scenario like this, we would not go and do another McDonald's or a Pizza Express, we would sort of come with a narrative, which is in this case, the narrative was urban cityscape sort of uh, life, and then sort of move it, shift it from one uh, site to another. This is a site in Richmond um, that uh, you can see it's under concern. They actually have a quick fit next door here. And we, originally, when we came to, the, sort of to do the scheme with, uh, with them, they said, but the scheme looks like someone will come in here and would think that this is the reception area for quick fit. Um, so what's, what we've taken was, again, so the idea of go, stop, go. Uh, in this case, was a, um, a bus stop. Um, and um, looking at the timetable, looking at sort of the, the whole messaging of what is the bus stop about, it gives a sense of security. It's quite a small space, but you, you are used to a bus stop. You're used to sort of the element of you go there, you wait, you, you, you move on. Um, and sort of having that sort of was almost like the, the, the menu where we had yeah, the timetable there. The lollipop, the Ziggler co-signage poster. And using real sort of seat, bus stop seats rather than a mock ones. Um, give the feeling again so this is the area for the customers to move uh, go do their order and an area for the bikers to go and sort of ship the product and I think this is it isn't it oh no um, yeah looking back from the ordering area into the back seeing from all the way from the from the front that beautiful sort of oven seven ton oven each area we had to support it specifically um, uh, in, in Finchley Road we had a basement so into the ground they have a family that come from Italy they build the oven brick by brick and then you have to heat it up over a week and if you get it wrong I mean they have to heat it up slow if you get it wrong you have to demolish it and start again and what the hell is that? <laughs> that's someone taking the piss sorry <laughs> okay. if, if there are any questions, uh, we we have to answer. Okay, maybe maybe I would like to. Uh, ask a question. You started off the lecture by saying that uh, more and more you find yourself in the situation to uh, reject the immediate kind of uh, client kind of uh, preconceptions and requirements. Uh, but how do you actually balance that, for instance, with a project where you ask the bricklayers to be creative? Did you ever have a client that came up to you and said like, hey, why are you not listening to me? You're listening to my bricklayer? <laughs> Yes. Yeah, <laughs> and recite them. Yeah. We, um, I think it's uh, we're we're not there to sort of like preach for our clients. I think it's it's a process where we we kind of in each project we grow with the client. Sometimes uh, it doesn't work that way, and um, I I think it's um, you know I think they they learn to understand the way we work, which is pretty much hands on, pretty much on a site specific, pretty much sort of getting, um, 
what, what tends to happen, because we go into um, and not work of other designers or other architects, but we, we take them completely into another planet, uh, they, they behave in a way, in a similar way. They are able to adjust themselves into that way of thinking. It helps them to be pulled out of the situation. All right, are there any other questions? Otherwise, since there's, okay. Um, we, when we start working on a project, we, we scratch around almost around the site and around the client, I think, to find this concept, that, you know, the thing that sort of gels the whole project together, that makes everything cohesive and works for us. And we feel that we can demonstrate our idea through this metaphor. So we always go to our first presentation with those conceptual images because we help we, we believe that it helps to tell the narrative, to tell the story of what we want to create, like the tree house. You know, I think um, with that image we, we helped the, the client understand what, what we're trying to do. And we work with that image all the way through. And sometimes we will be designing and doing the drawing package and we'll, then we'll look at the, the reference image, the you know, the concept image, and we'll have to strip it all back because we've helps lost the essence. Helps to ground us ourselves also. It helps, it helps to remind us where we what came from. What we're doing. From, what is essence. it that we're doing. It's that, it's that sort of north um, element of that it, it guides you in the direction of where is, you know, rather than, you'll find it yourselves in, in projects with clients where, 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 yeah, but can we have, I, I mean, they'll come to you with bits of brochures and bits of, and can we do this and can we do and that ideas, and, and, yeah. and ideas and I've seen that so far there and, and, and then you're able to sort of bring them back to what was it, that big idea, that blue sky approach that you had before that gives that pro a specific project that focus. And um, I think it helps both. I mean, we pretty much work on it and, and yeah. Yeah, customers, would, they would never give you the kind of brief you'll get in the AA, which is a very sort of creative brief. I mean, they would tell you, I want, I want toilets. Yeah, they, yeah, they say they want, you know, we want an office space with, with two meeting rooms, um, a reception desk, you know, and some desks in it. And it's, it's for you guys to, you know, to, to challenge brief. that brief. Yeah, we had the one brief, I think. And yeah. we, normally, what we have to do is to go and scratch the brief out. Yeah, we take the brief and we write the brief. And then we and then we interpret it. Which helps. Based on what you choose the element, like the project the bear fly. Based on what you choose the bear fly. It could be like for example a bird, why not? Not a bird. It's a bear fly. Well the the butterfly came from the fact that it was sort of you know, a bird you have an egg and, and it hatches from the egg, but we felt very much that um, the pupa, the sort of the dry case, um, was was a better me metaphor for us with that building, and also it was only a five-year um, lease life for for the building, so we felt it had a very short lifespan, like a butterfly, that it comes in, and it's very bright and dynamic, and um, but it has a short life, so I think it was the 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 five-year lease that made us think of, of the butterfly.